Although thanks a million to Sony UKPR for loaning me this Xperia 1 Mark III for review, it's not actually the 2021 Sony I was looking forward to most. That honour goes to the Xperia 5 Mark III, which is smaller, more focused and generally more lovable. But the Xperia 1 Mark III tried its best to wow me with a number of significant improvements over last year's 1 Mark II. Perhaps not enough to get an owner of the latter to upgrade, but certainly enough to, to be worth going through them. The 4K OLED display here is slightly brighter and 120 hertz now. I still don't think it's bright enough for comfortable use outside in the sun. And it's one of the reasons I prefer the 5 range with the 1080p display that's more visible. And talking of displays, it's Gorilla Glass Victus here now, so super durable. But I still didn't feel happy testing this for real out and about until I'd ordered in a clear TPU, as here, I'd hate to dent a review device. With the trivial caveat that the Mark III here is half a mil thicker, the battery's 500 milliamp hours bigger at 4500, which is good. And with the usual Qi charging here for a true flagship, it's a doddle to keep this topped up and always to have power to spare in daily use. And there's now reverse wireless charging, as on the Samsungs, etc. This works really well. You do have to kind of dive into settings to kick this off. There's nothing in the, the swipe down tile centre. Maybe that will come with an update. I couldn't find any specs for the Qi charging for this phone, but in my tests it was fast to fill up via the main coil, so I'm assuming 15 watts minimum. Carrying on the charging theme, this has now been up to 30 watts from, I think, 21, i.e. 15 volts and 2 amps. And there's a lovely little 30 watt power delivery charger in the box. So well done, Sony. There's a faster chipset inside the Snapdragon Treble 8 with 12 gig of RAM now standard on both storage variants, which now includes a half terabyte option. As you can imagine, an 888 with 12 gig of RAM absolutely flies, especially with Sony's particular take on oleophobic screen coating. It's just so smooth. And yes, the phone will slide off a horizontal desk if you place it display side down every time. Then throw in 240 hertz touch detection up from 60 hertz. With fingers and UI flying, the user experience here is just top notch. You never have to wait for anything. The fastest phone I've ever used, I think so, rivaling the iPhone 12 Pro Max shooting this show. Finally, the three times telephoto camera from the Mark II has now been replaced by a dual focal length unit, a periscope here, offering 2.9 times and 4.4 times. While this is in theory a wonderfully flexible system, you can see from my examples here that 4.4 times zoomed shots aren't as crisp as they should be. And tellingly, you can often get better results by digitally zooming on the 2.9 lens. Oh dear. Sony does always seem to mess something up in the image processing department and the 4.4 times lens is perhaps this year's screw up, at least until updates come. Happily away from this 4.4 times lens, photo results are terrific with naturalistic processing, great stabilisation and a good automatic multi-frame night mode. There's the utterly wonderful real-time eye and face detection, plus optional object tracking. All of these on all three, or is it four now, lenses brought together in a single default application, Photography Pro. Essentially, its basic mode now is similar to the Mark II's camera app, and the other modes are from the old Pro app. Don't worry if this sounds confusing, it's really not anymore, happily. This can shoot video too here, here's a sample. Test video here on the Xperia 1 Mark III at a very noisy weir. Trying out the different zoom factors though. And this on the 2.9 times telephoto. And this on the 4.4 times telephoto. Note that you can't switch between lenses during a shot, which is a tiny bit annoying. So back to one times and the sun keeps going in, which makes the white balance judgment on the framing rather, rather tricky. And for reference, with the sun now in, here's the wide angle video. 
There's also the same Cinema Pro video app as last year, and this hasn't been improved. It's still strictly for people with tripods and lots of time to fiddle and set up shots. Out of the box, this comes with Android 11, of course, and we'll get Android 13 in time in 2023, plus security updates through 2024 at the very least. Considering that this is a very vanilla Android with just a few uninstallable bits of bloatware, Asphalt, Call of Duty, Tidal, <clears throat> it's very pixel-like in terms of feel and speed. Sony does add a side sense feature, which I describe as inspired by Samsung's edge screen, but dramatically not as useful. The highlight is probably multi-screen here, which you can set up at pairs and just recall them. It is handy, but is it just me? Do people actually use these features? I can't say I've actually ever used multi-window in anger on any phone. It makes for a great demo, but back in daily life, you want as much content as possible from each app, and that's almost always means full screen. Just as on Samsung, Sony's Android auto detects video playback and leaps in by default to, quote, improve the visual quality. See the side-by-side -side demo. Essentially, it's upping luminance sharpness. Though the pedant in me might point out, if Sony hadn't gone for a dimish 4K panel in the first place, they wouldn't need to artificially increase clarity when you actually look at the screen. Media is in fact a bit of a crown jewel in the Sony experience these days. Each has a 3.5mm audio jack. Yes, they brought it back for last year's two ranges and it's present here and working very well. There's a decent amp used and it can drive all my test wired headphones. Don't worry too much about the reality audio and spatial sound. They're snake oil on the whole. Sorry, Sony. Sorry, Apple and others. I love my audio, but I just don't get the benefits for everyday music listening. But hey, whatever music format you want, whatever codec is needed, Sony ships them all out of the box. So there's peace of mind, at least in terms of being future proof. Plus front facing speakers with Dolby Atmos. There's a demonstration, full volume, Marillion Live. I think the left channel isn't quite as meaty as it was before, but it's still pretty darn good. Lots of presence. Very clear. <laughs> if you thought Marillion were dead after fish, then you should check them out over the last 30 years. There's also dynamic vibration. This can't be overemphasized. It's wonderful. Oh, I can't really demonstrate it on video. When holding the Xperia 1 Mark III, the large haptic vibrator pulses as needed in time with loud noises and music. So you, you feel the kick drum, you feel the bass guitar, you feel gunshots and explosions in movies, at least not in games. There are three levels of dynamic vibration. I'm usually on one or two out of three. There's plenty of uh, headroom there. Other hardware gadgets I love are the capacitive fingerprint scanner on the power button, which is 100.000% reliable and wonderful. There's a notification LED at the top for charging and, well, uh, notifications. There's a dedicated two-stage camera shutter button, of course, and it really helps. There's a dedicated Google Assistant button, which I'm getting used to, but which is a huge time saver, even more convenient than saying, hey, G, etc., which still takes longer on Android than on Siri does on my iPhone, but I'm just saying. Anyway, the buttons, all of them, they help. They really help. And despite the, the jacks, the ports, the micro SD slot, which doesn't need a SIM tool, you just pull it out with your fingernail. Despite that, despite the buttons, the Xperia 1 Mark III is still IP68 water and dustproof. See Samsung, see Apple, see imitators. You cannot use waterproofing as an excuse to get rid of all the stuff we like. I'll calm down now. This is all sounding a bit gushing. I'll just remind you, this is a £1,200 it's expensive Sony flagship, and it's not perfect. There's the rather dim outdoors display, the currently underperforming 4.4 times telephoto camera. Otherwise, there's an awful lot to like it. And as someone who switched back to Android day to day a few weeks ago myself, and to a previous generation Sony at that, I can vouch for just how lovely it is to have back all the gadgets, all the stuff other companies, quote, settle for removing quote, courageously. <clears throat> One plus Apple. At least you can see where your money's going here in terms of form factor gadgets and features, even if I think the upcoming Xperia 5 Mark III is going to be a better, smaller and cheaper proposition overall. Watch this space for that one.